Hey y'all, so today we're talking about Cinemachine. Uh, this is kind of the large-scale overview of what is Cinemachine, why should you care, and what's happening right now with that tool. So for those of you that don't know, Cinemachine is a virtual camera tool that exists within Unity Editor. Uh, and you typically will use it if you have many different cameras in the scene. If you are working in Unity, you probably already know this, but if you don't, it's a great heads up that you don't want multiple main cameras in your scene that you're toggling between. There's just a lot of overhead and a lot of background rendering that's happening that doesn't need to be. Um, so the idea is that Cinemachine allows you to have one primary brain controller and then a bunch of virtual cameras that you're essentially toggling on and off and triggering different behaviors with those cameras. So first let's do uh, an overview of the, the main Cinemachine webpage. Then I'm going to show you what it looks like in action in the HDRP template. Then I'm going to open a blank scene, pull in Cinemachine, and show you a couple ways that I typically will implement that. So first, let's look at this website. We'll scroll through it quite quickly. So this gives you an overview of what are you doing with Cinemachine, how do you install it, as well as some of the basic behaviors, some of the features, and some advanced controls. You have more resources down here, one of them being Cinemachine 3.1, what's new with that. Uh, so this video might be a new one whenever you see mine, uh, but the idea is that this will cover what's new in the most recent release. The one that I care the most about though is going to be using Cinemachine and clicking on Get Started. So I've clicked on that, and in my new tab, I now have all of the documentation about Cinemachine, and you can see up here that this is on Cinemachine 3.1.2. So you can see the package, all the info that you want about installing, getting started, 3D tracking, 2D games, constraining cameras to paths, etc. There's a ton of meat within this, and I'm excited to show you over in the HDRP project. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up now. And essentially what I want to show you is, first of all, this gizmo here with the half red camera, half gear. That is the gizmo for a Cinemachine camera. And this is just the super high level of showing how it's typically set up. Then we'll dive into that blank scene. Um, but in a third person controller that we're seeing here that comes within the high definition render pipeline template scene that I'm looking at here. So this is that sample scene. You can see that underneath the third person controller, we have a main camera. And on this main camera, we have this icon here, this gizmo for Cinemachine brain. So why do we have that there? because inside of the package manager, inside of this sample scene or sample project, we've already pulled in Cinemachine. So you can see that it's here. I didn't have to pull it in because it was already included. I do have the option to update it, which I'll do in our blank scene. But for now, that's why it's here. That's why it exists. And you see that icon on the main camera because we have added, or rather it's been added for us in this template, a Cinemachine brain. So this is the backend brain that controls everything that's happening, which camera is being used, how's it being updated, what are events that are happening uh, that we want to make sure trigger different camera cuts or camera activations. And that brain lives here on the controller. Now the other thing that we can do is look at the player follow camera. So here we have player follow camera and here you see a Cinemachine virtual camera. So this is what each virtual camera is going to look like, is a kind of a scriptable object, a game object within the hierarchy. And you can come in here and see a lot of different metrics here, what priorities it's set to. Priority is an important thing that you can control as you enter trigger volumes or other things to kind of push up or down the priority of a camera and force it to become the main camera. Uh, what is it looking at? any other types of very granular controls like lens, focal length, transitions, what type of body dampening do you want in here with a third person follow camera. There's a ton of stuff you can dig into. So that's how it's generally set up. And if I were to hit play, we're going to let this load in and then I'll have my scene pulled up to the side. You can then see that within my game here that this camera is reacting exactly as it's been told to by the Cinemachine camera. So I'm moving my mouse around and it is reacting in this behavior because 
it's supposed to be doing that with this specific virtual camera. If we enter a trigger volume or in our timeline, we're animating to a different camera, it would snap to a different virtual camera. And that one would take over with different behaviors and different metrics that have been defined. So now that you understand what Cinemachine is, why it works, uh, how it works, I'm going to go ahead and jump into pulling it into a fresh scene. And how do you typically want to get up and running with Cinemachine? So I'll see you over in that blank project. All right, so we are in a blank scene. So let's go ahead and do what we always do first, which is go to Window, Package Manager, go into Project. I don't see Cinemachine, so I want to go into the registry and do Cinemachine. Now I'm going to go ahead and install the most recent version, and we'll let that install very briefly. So while this is happening, what I really want to do is to install the most recent version of Cinemachine, pull down a sample, see what these look like and how they're typically implemented. So I'm just going to import this 3D samples. So you can see quickly when looking through each of these scenes that they all have something unique going on that you can come in here and start to understand how it's working, what the main camera is doing, etc. What I want to do just for the sake of simplicity is I'm showing you where the samples are, but then I want to go back and just make a new scene. So I'm going to do a basic built in. I'm not going to save any changes to this. So now what I want to do in this scene is just create something simple. So we'll just do a capsule. And then I'm going to create a cube and we'll go ahead and just make that Something like that. So let's just say that our capsule is slowly moving from one side to the other. And I want my cameras to act in a different way based on a timeline. So I want to come up here into my main camera. I can add a component and I can add a Cinemachine brain. Once I have the Cinemachine brain created, I can then add in a 3D object, or rather, I can then add in a Cinemachine. I'll say a targeted camera and I'll say a follow camera. And you can see here, it's going to give me a couple issues that it has component is disabled or has a problem. And that's because it's currently not tracking anything. So let's drag this over. So it is now following, which means if I take this and move it, the camera is going to move along with it. So let's just say I come in here and do a timeline. So I'm just going to create an empty, call it timeline. Go to window, sequencing, timeline, drag that down here. Let's add a timeline and we'll save that out. And I do have a demonstration or a tutorial on timeline elsewhere. So I'm going to drag the capsule down here, add an animation track, and I will uh, I'll link to my animation tutorial in the description. And then let's just say 570 later, we're going to be all the way at the end. Now we can take off the recording and now that's what we want to do there. So that's perfect. I want to right click down here, and do a Cinemachine track. And now I can say this is my Cinemachine camera to start. And then I want to create a new camera. Oh, my bad. Not a new camera, a new Cinemachine camera. And I can do this a few different ways, but I'm thinking just for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to right click Cinemachine. And we will do a third person aim camera. And the target here is going to be this capsule. So because this is offset in this direction, 
What I actually want to do is move the player because the paradigm is a bit different with something like a third person follow. And all of this you'll just kind of learn as you're you're playing with it. And then let's say that's pretty good, but I really want to control the camera a bit more. And I want to add a bit more offset. And let's say I want to bring it this way so it's just over the shoulder. And I think that's looking pretty good. Now what's probably going to happen, and I don't want to turn this into a timeline tutorial, is that, yeah, so it's going to snap the capsule back in that direction. So I actually need to turn it here in the timeline so that it doesn't automatically do that. And then let's come all the way out here. And we're good there. Okay, so now that I've changed it in the actual timeline, you'll see that the camera is in the correct spot. So that's looking better, but the issue is that now you can see in the timeline here, they don't really blend together. So if I want to, I can actually have these blend between the two over the scope of this 570 frames. So I'm doing all of this via timeline. So let's hit play and just see what this looks like. And you'll see here the blend in the camera. So then it blended and it's now following over the shoulder. Now how it blends, the animation of that, you can control all of these things. Uh, we just don't have the 20 minutes to get into it in this 10 minute tutorial. So the other thing that you could do in here would be to create some triggers and on trigger enter, force a priority of zero on the camera that you designate that you could drag in through some public variable. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can start to work more with Cinemachine, but wanting to keep this as concise as possible, just showing the, the timeline portion of this today. If y'all are interested in seeing how to program it, I'll come back to this later on. So we looked at how to look at the documentation for Cinemachine, how to get Cinemachine into your project, how to look at the samples, how to set up a basic scene with some Cinemachine cameras, and what all of that is going to look like. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.